Good morning, and thanks for waiting for the cleanup crew here. I appreciate that. Uh, I don't want to keep folks from lunch, but I do have a few things on my heart, and I want to be able to share. Um, uh, I'm going to cry a lot today. I apologize. I really, I really don't want to, but I will. But I can avoid that a little bit by thanking some of the folks that are here today. I want to thank our esteemed president. Uh, I am so inspired by your vision for the future and I'm so excited to do everything I can to support you. Thank you for this honor and thank you so much for your leadership. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Senator Blunt. Um, I was one of those students um, who have benefited from the Pell Grant and being able to come to a school like William Jewell. And so um, not only that, but your long career in supporting and advocating for Missourians and for all of America, I want to thank you so much for that. Um, to the trustees, uh, thank you so much for stewarding this incredible institution. Um, and it is truly incredible. And also to my fellow honorees, um, it has been fun to get to know you. Um, and I will avoid spilling any of your secrets uh, in my comments today. <laughs> Um, it really is a truly special honor to be here. Um, it was a literal one in a million chance, I think, that I even made it to college, um, given the circumstances I grew up in. And so to be here um, receiving an honor like this is very special, uh, to say the least. Um, as Tom said, I grew up in Kansas City's highest violent crime rate neighborhood. I was, uh, grew up in a low-income household in a single-parent home. Um, and college was um, uh, a fantasy, something you saw on TV, something you heard about, but wasn't a tangible reality. Um, I was determined from a very early age that my um, end point in life would be dramatically different um, than my starting point, that the predictable outcome that had been laid out for me because of my racial background or my socioeconomic status um, or the zip code in which I was born would be different, um, not only for myself, but for future generations. But I wasn't exactly sure what that looked like or what that meant. Um, I found William Jewell because it shared my uh, desire and aspiration for highest achievement. Um, the same aspiration that I had for myself when I walked the campus, when I heard people talk, when I visited with the alums, it was very clear that this was a place that believed in excellence in everything, and that's where I wanted to be, what I wanted to be associated with. When I arrived in William Jewell in 2002, I was a first-generation high school grad. I had not a penny to my name, and I had a dream of one day playing in the NBA. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I did not play in the NBA. When I left William Jewell four years later, I was a first generation college graduate. I somehow was poorer. Thank you, student debt, although the Pell Grant helped. Uh, and I had study experience at the University of Oxford. I had traveled on research trips twice to the Middle East. I'd worked as an advisor to the governor of Missouri. I'd received national recognition as a Gilman Scholar, as uh, the first national finalist for the Rhodes Scholarship in William Jewell's history, and as one of the top 20 college students in the country as recognized by USA Today. And so to say that Jewell, my Jewell experience was transformational is um, an understatement. Uh, miracles happened for me here. And um, miracles happen every day, I think, for kids like me and for all of us who take advantage of the opportunities that are, that are presented here. You know, Desmond Tutu one time told me that the Lord works in mysterious ways because he chooses to work through everyday people and the actions that they have, not in supernatural ways, but in courageous, bold action that happens in small and quiet ways every day. And so there are... <laughs> <laughs> this is where I'll try not to get emotional, but um, there's some folks here that were uh, really important to my they were really important to my jewel journey, and um, I want to acknowledge them. And if I could, if they would stand when I acknowledge them, the first is uh, Professor Kevin Shavstall. Professor Shavstall taught me that leadership is not a position, but it's a series of actions. And I can't thank you enough for your mentorship and leadership. Can we give Kevin a round of applause? <laughs> the 
Dr. Michael Cook, would you stand? Dr. Cook, um, uh, I had, <laughs> you know, Dr. Cook had a reputation for being very difficult and very challenging, but really what it was is he had high expectations and he never lowered him for anything and he never allowed any shortcuts. And in my life, I spent a lot of time talking my way out of trouble and Dr. Cook never allowed that and that was exactly what I needed here on campus. He also helped me discover a passion for economics and candidly gave me a lot of tangible language and rationale to some of the macroeconomic shifts that allowed some people in our world to have so very much and me as a young person to have so very little and that was um, in some sort of small way very comforting and I want to thank you so much for your, for your support in my life. Can we give Dr. Cook a round? Dr. Robinson, we stand up. Um, there's not going to be an easy way for me to get through these, these words, but I'm going to try, Dr. Robinson. Um, Dr. Robinson, um, simply put, helped me. Um, realized I belonged at Jewel, and there were not, there were not a lot of um, other indicators at that time that that was the case, and um, um, you know, Dr. Robinson uh, provided a, a safe haven for me. I had one class with you, I only had one class with you, but you provided such a safe haven for me, and being able to process my Jewel experience to being able to candidly um, have a, a listening ear when I was dealing with a variety of challenges on campus. And Dr. Robinson was always in my corner. She helped me sort of, if I were to kind of put it in a nutshell, to transition uh, candidly much of the pain that I experienced as a child and drive it into purpose and find purpose here um, while during my time at Jewel. And, um, I am um, forever grateful um, to you, Dr. Robinson. Dr. Robinson is, and I, I could be wrong on this, and if I'm wrong, I apologize, but is our first and only black fully tenured professor at William Jewell in our long, illustrious history. And when I think about um, your leadership, it is truly inspirational. Um, it is truly, uh, you are a trailblazer in so many ways. And um, I think if we as a campus are um, serious about being intellectually rigorous and achieving the highest degrees of excellence, the next hundred years should be populated with so many more amazing leaders and women like Dr. Robinson. And so I thank you so much. Okay, all right, <laughs> got through the hardest part. All right, um, um, there's a, uh, a, a Zen Buddhist quote that I like that helps guide my life that says that all enlightenment you find on the mountaintop is the enlightenment you brought with you. And when I think about my own life and experience, I learned very little in moments like this of great achievement. I learned every lesson I ever learned deep down in the trenches in the dark valleys of life and in the long arduous roads and climbs up the mountain. Um, and one of the things that I learned in that, if I learned anything, was that persistence is far more important than perfection. Persistence is more important than perfection. Um, to illustrate that point, I want to share a little anecdote. Um, when I applied for the Rhodes Scholarship, there were lots of naysayers and lots of doubters that, you know, that was even something achievable for a kid from Jewel, period, but certainly a kid with my background. Um, and I thought that the path to winning the Rhodes Scholarship was perfection. Um, and I tried everything in my efforts to achieve that in written form. And back in the old days, um, you couldn't electronically uh, submit applications. You had to print everything out. It was an incredibly rigorous process. It was months and months of preparation. And you had to come up with these packets that were made up of, you know, 15 or so letters of recommendation, transcripts, endorsements from the college, and a personal statement. And the personal statement was the most important element of this. This was the piece where you boiled down your whole life's purpose. Imagine like responsible self on steroids. That's what this, uh, that's what this was about. And 
this got reviewed, this packet of information got poured over and poured over and poured over and reviewed by countless alumni and I think even some trustees and, and uh, faculty and staff and myself, of course. This was the most important seminal essay. In my mind, this was the thing that was going to um, change my life forever. And uh, I remember getting to the completion of that months and months of preparation and you had to mail these packets off in a hard copy mail, physically mail them, sent them off in the mail. And when I went back home that evening, um, I thought, you know what? I'm feeling pretty good about this. I feel pretty good about my shots. I liked what I put together. I'm just gonna read this essay one last time. Right? I'm just going to take one fresh set of, I'm going to, you know what, I want to know what it's like when these people get to read how great I am. I want to sit down and I want to read this document. So I sit there and I'm reading it. Starts out, talks about my childhood and the trauma and turbulence and everything I experienced. I'm like, oh yes, yeah, good. I hit it. I hit it. You know, I, I put it in there. And it talks about my experience at Jewel and how transformational it was. And it's like, yeah, I'll feel really good about that. I talk out right at the end of the passage, the whole, the very, very culminating paragraph, I talk about how I'm going to use all of this stuff, all of this sort of experience as a child and this experience on campus, and I'm going to use this to become a committed public servant. Public servant. That's what I left off with. Those were the final two words of that statement. And I felt like, man, I really punched it and hit it home. Except... I noticed that I had made a glaring typo that wasn't caught by Microsoft Word, wasn't caught by the myriad of reviews. And those final two words, public servant, I had left out the letter L in public servant. Public servant. Some of y'all still haven't figured it out. So like, yeah, ask a neighbor, all right? I can't, I can't say those words at, at, here at this church, okay? In the end, I, you know, was a national finalist for the Rhodes, and um, it was a big honor for the university. It was a big honor for me, uh, but didn't win the award, and it was crushing. And I remember thinking that it was just another blow, just another blow. I was just kind of tired of taking knocks on the chin in life. And... Um, there's another Zen parable that I, that I look to for, for guidance and support often that talks about two men who are climbing two separate ladders, and one is on the second rung of the ladder, just barely off the ground, and the other is 20 or so rungs up, much higher. And they ask the shaman, you know, which of the two men is the greatest? And he says, whichever one's still climbing. And when I think about my own life, when I think about my childhood, when I think about my time at Jewel, when I think about who I am today, if I were to offer you any advice, it's never stop climbing. Never stop climbing. Whatever somebody says you can't do, push for that thing. Achieve that thing. Whenever you have a goal, go after it. Whenever you're, you think you've achieved some sort of success, humble yourself and acknowledge what you haven't achieved. Get better every single day. It's the tools that I use to be a better husband every day. It's the tools that I use to be a better father. It's the tools I use to be a better leader. And yes, it's even the tools I use to be a better public servant today than I was before. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. It's an incredible honor. I'm really grateful. And Cardinals forever. Thank you so much.